Okay, the chair will call uh, Representative uh, Lambert. The chair. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you very much for a few moments of your time. It's the state's responsibility to defend its people against the absolute ruling of those people by its leaders. Some people believe that the Constitution is a historical document that reflects the values of the people who founded this nation rather than a document that limits the authority of the federal government over the states that make up and compose this union. Our society was organized to protect the people against the absolute ruling of a federal government or any other tyrant. The Constitution took power, the powers to govern and they delegated in our, in the states delegated certain powers to the federal government. But when the Constitution was written, the people who were there said, we need to protect our citizens. We introduced a Bill of Rights, not only to say these are the powers granted, but these are the powers retained. Our Constitution was designed to limit government. It was designed to bind the people under the power, the government under the power of the people. The people are both burdened and protected by this Constitution, but they don't know it. It is only us, the states who can actually defend those people. And through re reaffirmation of this information, we can help our people and citizens understand that it is their government. The Constitution matters. And if you don't believe me, look at the news. Because in Egypt, they suspended theirs the other day. If our government begins to fail us, it will be our responsibility to be redefine it. But at this point, the citizens in that country had to show up to do it. In our country, that power was delegated to the states. Our states need to say, you know what? You report to us. That was the intention. It was clear in the documentation. This is not a historical document. We need to say, this is our power. We need to make sure that you know it. We need to make sure that you remember that you really are given the power to consent to govern by the states. No government, no rule or authority has been granted any powers outside of the Constitution. Our founders in this state went out and said our people have natural rights. Any power not dictated in our Constitution, we didn't give up. When we ratified the federal Constitution, we didn't give up any of those powers. We didn't delegate them. We didn't have the right and authority. Let's make sure that we remind our citizens not that we want to secede from the union, but that we want to make sure the union is responsible to them, their needs and desires, and prevent the over-expansion of government so that we make sure that in the future we are not the potential victims of tyranny. Thank you, Representative. Do we have any guys questions for the representative? Yes, Representative. Thank you, Representative. Uh, and, and I apologize for missing part of your presentation, I needed to make sure we hear you clearly. Um, uh, what if, what happens if the needs and desires of individual states differ? How is that resolved? Well, if the power wasn't actually given to the federal government, then each state is a sovereign uh, state and needs to operate on its own. There are places and cases where that's a real issue today, where people go out and say, these rights, which don't ex extend beyond our borders, are simply the control of ours. And, and to pick one that's sort of out in the press on a regular basis, we have multiple states that have gone out and passed uh, legislation for medical marijuana. The federal government says, you know what, you can't have that. The state of Colorado says we've licensed over 200 farms because we believe it's within our power and authority and jurisdiction to do that. And the federal government can get out. You can't go and defend your laws because within our state, we are the supreme authority. Any other questions? What's that? Well answered. Thank you. Representative. It's not true that prior to New Hampshire joining the Union, there was no federal Bill of Rights. Because the requirement of New Hampshire, they have a Bill of Rights. And they had to have that before New Hampshire would join for the United States. Is that not true? I didn't know that. Uh, they didn't cover that in my New Hampshire history and Constitution class when I was in high school. I didn't come from here. Um, I actually moved here, but I realized when I got here that this is a 
state government that actually respect, uh, respects and honors uh, the power and uh, authority of the people, and it wouldn't surprise me, and I would like to preserve that heritage if it's true. It would, uh, there are some people who've made that argument. However, I believe that the Constitution also empowered some to um, allow, through amendment, the powers of taxation and some other things. Uh, so I, I'm not an absolute constitutional expert. Uh, so there are some subtleties that I didn't learn because I didn't go to law school. Uh, but I do believe they have some powers that extend beyond interstate commerce. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative, for your testimony. We send, when I say we, the state of New Hampshire sends four people to Washington, D.C., two senators and two members of the House of Representatives. Yes, sir. If, and I'm confused, I, I really don't know the answer to this, if they vote for a particular law which allows the federal government to do something in the state of New Hampshire, by the fact that they voted for that law, do we concede anything? The state I do not believe so. The original way that our representative government was established, we sent two senators to represent the state legislature, and we sent two representatives to represent the people, because they both have distinct interests. The interests of the state legislator, legislature should be represented by the Senate, just like the, um, because the voice of the legislature is different, that should be the, um, the representation of our laws and mandates. Now, that was repealed because some people went out and said, you know, we really want to elect our senators. Here or there, I'm not going to argue whether or not that that particular constitutional amendment was a good idea because I don't have the power to repeal it yet. Given that, um, I think it's really important that we understand that the, gov the people we elect to go to Washington have no power that was not granted to them by the Constitution of the state of New Hampshire or by the Constitution of the United States. So I don't care what they say, there's absolutely no rationale for them to say that me buying an airline ticket on any given day allows me to surrender my constitutional rights to privacy and to security of my person, my papers, and my effects. Nothing has, I have never delegated that authority to anyone I've elected. And when they come to me with a constitutional amendment that allows me to make that change, I will make that decision. But no one, not me, not my ancestors, ever delegated that power. And I hope they never do. I hope that answers your question. I think I knew the answer all along, but I just wanted to hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Representative. Uh, Thank you, sir. At this time, since there's no other cards here, I'm going to close the hearing on the next matter.